Let's focus on the United States and some good news there, where the U.S. regulators have formally approved the single-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the third jab to be authorized there. The vaccine is said to be a cost-effective alternative to Pfizer and Moderna vaccines and can be stored in a refrigerator instead of a freezer. Also, for the first time since early November, fewer than 50,000 patients have been uh, are hospitalized with COVID. Well, to talk more about this, we're now joined by Dr. Monica Gandhi, Professor of Medicine, University of California. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gandhi, for joining us. Uh, great Great news with the U.S. approving uh, the single shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine and a third vaccine in the U.S. to fight the pandemic. Yes, I'm actually very excited about this because I think the more options that we have, um, the better chance we have to get people immunized. Um, this is a one shot, what's called adenovirus vector um, with DNA. So it's a combination of a little virus that brings in the DNA um, into the cell. It's one shot, like you said. The phase three trial showed that it's very effective, 100% against deaths and hospitalizations. It has variable efficacy against um, more mild disease across the variants. It was studied in South Africa, Brazil, and the US, and its efficacy was highest in the US. At uh, uh, 72%, 57% in South Africa, 66% in Latin America against mild disease. However, the hospitalizations and death were blocked across all three settings um, at 100% efficacy. So I think it's an exciting new option. It's important for us to have more vaccines here in this country. And uh, Dr. Gandhi, now many countries have had their vaccine drives in place for a few months now, and there's some sort of uh, preliminary studies available uh, from the UK, from Israel. What have we learned so far from them about, you know, the vaccination and the infections? You know, I think what we've learned is that there's a race going on between the transmissibility of the virus and Good the vaccines. Board. And Israel and the UK specifically have been moving much more quickly then the U.S. as a third example, Israel, because they had a deal with Pfizer, so they were giving out just this uh, particular vaccine. U.K. because they approved multiple options, the AstraZeneca with the Moderna Pfizer. They were giving it out nimbly. They were waiting uh, 12 weeks between doses. And that combination of all of that has led to fast rollout in those two countries, which has yielded fruit. The cases and hospitalizations have gone down considerably. Um, so it is a race, and uh, the uh, U.S. needs more to help them win the race. Right, and even as this race is underway, there, there can be no room for laxity, isn't it? Because it, like here in India, we're seeing, you know, vaccination drive is going on, the next phase has begun, but cases are rising as well, so people have to continue following all those COVID protocols. Yes, it's really tricky, actually, because the more a virus replicates, the more it has a chance to mutate. Um, and we want to keep transmission down as we're rolling out the vaccine. It doesn't have to fight the virus running around so quickly. It can calmly sort of give people immunity, and it's better if there's lower rates of transmission. So we're exhausted. Understandably, people have been kept away from friends and family for a long time. But think of it as just a while longer until we can get to better immunity, I keep on looking at those countries rolling out faster, and they have timelines that really make sense. They're keeping their lockdowns, but they will have timelines in the short future that they can release them. Right, and you're talking about mutations. You know, we keep hearing different things about the variants. Lots of you are calling them scariants now, that, you know, it, it's spreading faster because of the variants. Then, uh, But there's been no categorical study on that front either. Uh, what can you tell us? We've also heard there's a New York variant now. You know, this is not unexpected that the virus along its spike protein would get these mutations. Some of them may be leading to um, spreading faster between two people, which is why our masks and distancing are so important. I don't think the virulence question is defined at all. You'd need more hospitalizations per case, and we are not seeing that. However, what's most important is if our natural immunity to infection or if the vaccine-induced immunity uh, won't work against the variants. And there is not evidence of that yet, which is why I think the scariants word is a fair word. We're scaring people. I don't want people to think, oh, I'm not going to even take this vaccine. It's not going to work. There are two arms of the immune system. There's antibodies and they're what are called T cells. T cells are very robust. They work across the whole spike protein and they have not been shown to be able to evade 
that the, the, these variants won't make you evade the immunity that you get from T cells. So people should just carry on, vaccinate, and not talk about the variants that much. All right, Dr. Gandhi, thank you so much for taking time out and speaking to us at NDTV.